Africa. Hello everyone, this is Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm Primus Hutchinson. The issue today is Helen's Daughters, a non-profit agricultural organization that focuses on empowering rural women engaged in the agricultural sector. To provide the answers is Ms. Kiflin Karu, founder and president of Helen's Daughters. Welcome to Issues and Answers, Ms. Karu. Thank you for having me, Mr. Hutchinson. Great. Uh, tell us a little bit more. I just gave a sneak preview of what <laughs> Helen's Daughters is all about. Tell us a little bit more about Helen's Daughters. Um, well, Helen's Daughters is a non-profit organization that focuses primarily on empowering rural women in the agricultural sector. <coughs> um, we started out in uh, November 2016 when we got selected for a UN Women's Empowerment Project and from there we've continued our programs. So it's a sort of a UN initiative? How Actually, what prompted, <laughs> the, the um, what prompted it was that there was an open call for proposals, for em em women's empowerment proposals and I decided to send out an idea pitch about advocating for um, I guess initiatives that support rural women in St. Lucia and we got selected for the Caribbean region. Why you decided that this is what you should be engaged in? Um, what what that's a, that interest? That's a good question. At the time, um, that was my second year as a desk officer at the UN um, and I had joined because I, like most other people, they want to help their country and so on but what I found was that when I joined the organization I was actually moving further and further from focus areas that affected the Caribbean region so when I saw the call for proposals I thought it would be a good way for me to have a job at the UN but still maintain a connection to St. Lucia and still help in whatever way that I could. So Rural Helen's Daughters is a St. Lucian based organization um, how were you able to get it going here um, I mean, get it in contact with with the rural women and and, and so on um, I'm fortunate that everybody else on our board is based in st. Lucia so I'm only the I'm the only one that's back and forth from New York and st. Lucia um, getting in touch with rural women it's been a mix of social media and also um, I guess you could say offline canvassing going to different markets and rural areas um, using whatever word of mouth techniques that we could to try to market our programs to them so you were <coughs> at the UN at the time you're still with the UN still with the UN but you I mean targeting rural women here on island. Yes. Um, how difficult was it? I mean, you mentioned social media, but uh, in rural women, how, how were you able to trigger their interest? Um, <coughs> I think that social media has helped, even though I know a lot of people will say, well, people don't have access to that. But from my experience, what is it has done is that it triggers the second generation of children of rural women. Many of our members and partner farmers actually got to know about Helen's daughters because their son or daughter saw our posts online and so on and then registered them. Um, like I said, we've also gone through the markets, done the canvassing in rural communities and so on. So it's been a mix of word of mouth and also social media, but through the children of farmers getting the wood out for us, <laughs> in essence. The, <coughs> how easy it was to, to, to get them interested, to have them to, to, to react and to at least follow your, 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 your guidelines in that regard. Um, I think it was actually easier than more people would think because in my experience rural women tend to be invisible in the agricultural sector um, when there are training programs and 
capacity development initiatives. When somebody thinks about agriculture, they aut automatically think of a man and a farmer. And what we started off was advocating for rural women, sh um, highlighting their plight like uh, market vendors in Castries Market and so on. And I think they were happy to at least get some type of spotlight on the issues that were affecting them. How, what, how was the experience? <coughs> were you able to visit rural women on their field? Uh, uh, how was it? Did, did you go from community to community? and? Uh, the, or the, the on-hand experience, actually, I mean, engaging rural women as they go about their daily tasks. I have. Um, I'm actually. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> I have because I'm actually from a rural community. I was about to get into that, <laughs> but anyway. Uh -huh. Which is technically what um, uh, I guess you could say pushed me towards advocating for rural women. I'm from Fuaso Babono, so a lot of. I'm surrounded by farmers and farmers' families, so it was easy for me to go from um, farmer plots that are near my um, family home, but we have also extended to different areas, for example, Miku, Denry, even as far as before to actually go onto their farms. Um, go ahead. You, you <coughs> and uh, I was planning to come up with this question a little later, mm -hmm. but now that you mentioned, um, you are from an agricultural family as well. Uh -huh. I mean, your granddad, one of the leading farmers at one time. And uh, grandmother. From the <laughs> and grandmother as well from the father. <laughs> how did that impact your interest and so on in, in, in the field? I mean, how, what was the experience like growing up with your, your grandparents as far as agriculture is concerned? Um, as far as agriculture is concerned, Sadly, my academic background does not lie in agriculture at all. It lies we'll in. We'll talk about that <laughs> a little later. Yes. It lies in political science and international relations. But, like I said, um, in a way, my grandparents and parents sort of pushed me towards a different field, like many other farmers, because after the crash of bananas and so on, I think a lot of farmers felt like why would I put my child or children into a profession that's that pr precarious? Um, <clears throat> so my mindset was never on farming, but when I got to the UN and then I kept going back and forth and I started seeing the statistics of St. Lucia's food import bill, for example, which is now at $360 million, um, seeing climate change and the hurricanes that are affecting us and just wondering how we would actually prepare for something like that. Like We're now due for a break. I'm oh sorry about that. We're now due for a break, but we will continue. Just hold that thought. Okay. Just stay tuned. Issues and answers will be right back. I'm innovative. Yeah! I'm competitive. Yeah! I'm productive. I am creative. I constantly improve what I do and how I do it. I am output oriented. I never stop learning. I give off my best always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. This is Issues and Answers. We are talking Helen's daughters and the president and founder, Ms. Kathleen Carew, is with us. Uh, before we took the break, you were telling us a little bit about how how your family background impacted your agricultural mm -hmm. agricultural interests. Mm -hmm. um, I had the pleasure and honor of working with your granddad uh, in my previous profession as mm -hmm. an agriculturist, and I'm, I'm sure that they impacted your interests greatly because I, I know them very well, and they have a strong history in the field of. In, in background in agriculture, um, and you were telling us about that as well. Um, so, were you, at, by any chance, able to do a little bit of agricultural work yourself? Um, um, now, notwithstanding the <laughs> experience in international relations <laughs> and so on. Now that <laughs> Helen's daughters came about in the last three years, um, now I got certified, for example, in agroforestry and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I'm actually planting trees for the first time and doing little herbs and uh, tree crops and so on. But before that, no, I had never had any experience <laughs> at all, uh, not even in planting <laughs> a tree. I do it. That, that's <laughs> understandable. That's understandable. How about the, the clusters, the various um, rural 
women clusters in Africa. How are they? How how is it going now? How what what's the experience like? Um, yeah. Well, the experience is that it does take a while to get to rural women. Um, there are definitely some helpful par partners that we have. For example, the St. Lucia Network of Rural Women. The president is Robin Darrell, and she's been quite instrumental in um, highlighting some of our programs and pushing their members towards our programs and so on. So um, in that regard, there are a few rural rural women's groups that are linked to Helen's daughters. Mm -hmm. How has been the assistance from the authorities as far as helping them out? Um, the, the produce, you know, selling the produce, markets and all of that. How is that a bit challenging? How is it working for them? It's challenging for us. We started out with advocacy, then that led to capacity development, which um, our training programs, like for example, we just launched our six month rural women's academy that's at Alias Fosses. Okay. Um, and now what we're doing is we've created a social enterprise and uh, in a sort of way, a women's cooperative, you could say. Um, that facilitates the sale of these women's produce to the hotel sector. So we've been doing a lot of bootstrapping and, and work ourselves on the ground, to be honest. Okay. Gender equality is receiving lots of attention in recent times. Uh, how does that impact women in the agricultural sector? I think that yeah, it's definitely gotten a lot of um, spotlight or um, a lot of good media but I think that a lot of people at times use use the term gender equality just as a catchphrase because they know how important well they see how it how some people view it as important I think in the agricultural sector in St. Lucia to be honest I don't think um, it's really gotten to the point of opening the doors for as many women farmers as it should have that takes me, that brings us, that takes me to the other question youth and women uh, do you believe they're marginalized in the agricultural sector? What are your views on this? I believe that they're marginalized, but in different ways. For example, with women, um, I think that the mindset is that a man is a farmer. Um, though they go, people go to the market, the cashier's market and so on, they see most women, but they think of them as weavers, as vendors. But they don't realize that a lot of these women are actually doing both jobs, farming and vending. Um, for youth, I think that generally in St. Lucia you hear, oh, um, St. Lucia and young people, they don't want to do nothing, they're lazy, and so on. But I actually think that with youth it's difficult because in the banana days, the reason why most people went into bananas was because they saw a lucrative benefit to it. With youth, they're not seeing that benefit at all, so I wouldn't blame someone for wanting to go into a profession without actually seeing the money that they could make from mm -hmm. it. So in that essence, I think that they've sort of been marginalized, but it's in a way not their fault because they don't see the actual mm -hmm. investment or the benefit. But, but that trend of thought, is, is, is it changing maybe s slowly? But I, uh, um, yeah. I think little by little you're seeing quite a few agricultural entrepreneurs that are popping up, but it's still not something I think you could go into a room full of and young Helen, people. Helen's daughters, uh, uh, has to be credited for that. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that we're the primary reason for changing the mindset, but I really do hope that we contribute a little to that. Mm -hmm. Has there been any, any data uh, to collected to determine women's input in agriculture? Uh, That's uh, actually a great question. And to be honest, gender mapping in St. Lucia, there's not really much data that you can find in not just in the agricultural sector, but overall. Uh, have you have, have you been looking in that direction and seen how that can be rectified somehow? We are trying to how is do it that going? ourselves. It's difficult because right now uh, we're trying to do our capacity development on a s small team that's mostly voluntary. Already. Are you all collaborating with the Ministry of Agriculture in uh, any way? Um, no, we are not collaborating with the Ministry of Agriculture as yet. As yet. No. But are you planning to? We hope the so. The expertise are there. Yes, I mean, we have 
we let them know what we're doing and our doors are very open for a, a collaboration so <laughs> if they're watching then Helen's Dot is very open to collaborating with the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay well. so hopefully in the coming years um, one can look forward to you know uh, greater cooperation with the Ministry of in the Ministry and Helen's Daughters I working hope together. So. I definitely hope so. Okay. Um, do you believe um, women can do more? Are you satisfied that they are taking advantage of the opportunities available as far as agriculture is concerned? Um, and I said opportunities available. Um, I'm not sure if you believe that there are opportunities available. In agriculture? In agriculture. Oh, absolutely. I Great. think agriculture is a very lucrative business. I mean, 90% of every developed economy in the world, one of their main exports and internal markets is agriculture. Look at the Netherlands, look at America and so on. Um, I think in St. Lucia, we just, with bananas, it created a highly specialized economy and farmers were never given the chance or the information to diversify and to get access to different markets. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with a little bit of investment and some information sharing and so on, we can actually change that. Okay, so um, for a, 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 a woman who, a woman farmer who may have heard of Helen's Daughters but perhaps um, do not have that much information and probably mm -hmm. wants to be aligned to or to work with you all or to, 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 to have contact with you all somehow. Um, what are they supposed to do to, to be part of that organization? Um, what um, exactly? It's uh, quite easy. They can reach out to us on our number. It's 287-7700. Um, they can also email us info at helensdaughters.org. We are also on Facebook and um, uh, Instagram, and we have our website as well, www.helensdaughters.org. Uh, you have any specific produce, agricultural produce, that you uh, have given priority to, or just agricultural produce generally? Do you have specific ones that, that, that you believe are marketable uh, as far as the organization is concerned? We do. We are focusing primarily for our Green Gold initiative on fast cash crops. So, okay. for example, tomatoes, cucumbers, and so on. Okay. And how, how's that going? How's how um, successful? How's well, it's right now, it's something that we're currently working on. Um, so, in the next, later down the line, I'll be able and, to tell and you. And most of the clusters, are in, you mentioned a few of the communities that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps you may need to, to, to just repeat that repeat the names of the communities once more so that people well we invite women from all communities but, but primarily we're f we've have clusters in babono in denry in miku in viewfort and, and they all engage in fast cash crops uh, yes they okay. are all right um well um we will speak a little bit about yourself we want to do that you tell us a little bit more about yourself but um before we do that. Um, anything interesting as far as the, the, the uh, getting the organization off the ground? Um, something that um, that may have, you know, uh, how should I put this? Uh, not probably disappointing as such, but a few little challenges that you may have uh, encountered. Uh, yes. Do you want to <laughs> tell us about that? I think the biggest challenge for me and running a women's organization and for our partner farmers is that they see us first as women and as professionals second. Okay. Just hold that thought. We'll get back to that. We are due for another break. Okay. This is Asian as Issues and Answers. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, look at you breastfeeding. I gave him birth just now, but I don't think I can breastfeed. Why won't you breastfeed? The thing is, my breasts are so small. I don't think I will have enough milk for my baby. My dear, you can breastfeed. The size of your breast does not matter. The more the baby sucks on your breast, the more milk your breast will make. People say your breast will fall when you breastfeed. I don't want mine to fall. Eventually, all breasts will fall. Once you wear a supportive bra, it will help maintain the muscles of your breast while you breastfeed. 
Breast milk is very important for your baby's health. It is complete nutrition for your baby with the right nutrients. I did a lot of reading whilst I was pregnant and found out a lot of good things about breastfeeding. Really? Like what? You will lose the baby fat much easier when you breastfeed. The baby is more intelligent and the baby gets sick less. It is also cheaper and practical since you wouldn't have to buy artificial milk or boil bottles. Breastfeeding does all that? Eh eh. Now you're making me want to breastfeed. I want my baby to be healthy and smart. There's more. In addition, I saved a lot of money from not having to buy formula. Do you know how expensive formula is? No formula? How is that possible? The baby will go hungry? No, the breast is adequate for the baby's need from birth to six months. The baby needs no other foods or liquids during that period. Is that so? My sister had a baby last year and my granny insisted she give the baby Toloma and she was only three months. Nothing before six months. The nutritionist will guide you on how to introduce foods to the baby. Wow, I learned a lot. I had no idea breastfeeding was that important. Yes, it is. Breastfeeding is the best thing you can do for your baby. Do it and you will see. You will also bond with your baby. I will, my girl. Nice talking to you. I'm happy to hear that. Also encourage your friends and family too. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. We're discussing Helen's daughters and we have with us the president and founder of Helen's Daughters, the organization, a non-profit agricultural organization, Ms. Kiflin Karu. And before we took the break, we were telling us a little bit about the challenges mm -hmm. or that you have encountered as far as the organization is concerned. You, you want to tell us a little bit more? Like I said, um, it's generally, you're a woman first, a professional second. When they hear about Helen's Daughters, it's more of a charitable organization that comes to mind. Um, and you generally get the idea that people think, oh, that's quite nice, that's so sweet that you're helping your people, but they don't actually think of the long-term effects of actually empowering women that are in charge of our food security. Now, Ms. Karu, we can be discussing rural women in our culture, and we can say something in Koyal. Nuni Pupalati Koyal. Alo avonu fini nuni budget ako dinu di nasio particularly uma mon kia seti komena sa Helen daughters ye ekuma na yuka ende from ki engage a agriculture agriculture of basically see well Helen's daughters say organisasyo ki kasi pote se agriculturist particularly ma we no, no. Um, no. Um, no. Um, 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 Oui. 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 Okay. Jeunesse, et l'autre monde qui est engagé, particulièrement femme qui est engagé avec jeunesse, à les affaires agriculture, Helen's Daughters, avec Mme Karou, qui est là pour assister les autres. Bon, nous parlons de ce jet. So, Ms. Karou, um, before we end, um, anything would you like to say as far as the organization is concerned, future plans, and, and what have you? Future plans and the organization, I think we're just getting started. and 
I just hope in the agricultural sector in the next few years that we'll be making our mark as women farmers in St. Lucia, I think. And, and influence the, the, the direction that agriculture is going. I'm sure that you can perhaps play a, a strong role in that regard. We really do hope so. Okay. Um, well, almost in that same trend of thought, um, do you see, how do you see the future for women in agriculture here? I mean, apart from of course, what you just said, and your plans for develop, de developing the agricultural sector, playing a role in the, in the development of the agricultural sector, but women in particular in that regard. What do you see a, a better future for them? Uh, in especially and, and, and Helen's daughters playing a serious role in, in, in that regard. Especially in this time and this current climate, I think that agriculture is probably one of the most important emerging markets that has to be redeveloped in St. Lucia. And I just hope that Helen's daughters can be a, a huge part of that redevelopment. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking time me, to Mr. speak Jensen. with us. I've been speaking with Ms. Kiflin Caro, who is the president and founder of Helen's Daughters. This has been Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm Primus Hutchinson. Thank you for viewing. It was great. <laughs> <laughs>